اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم سبحانك لا نحصيتنا أن عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر وأنت على كل شيء من قدير اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما والتفرق بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تدع فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم آمين In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most compassionate, the most merciful, all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He who is guided by the will of Allah, no one can misguide him and he who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah that we do bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are still in uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter Al-Baqarah. Today we will be dealing with verse 273. Uh, as we said, we have about 20 verses, all of them they revolve around the idea of sadaqa, charity, donation, and this main theme. The introduction that we always keep making once money is mentioned, we as Muslims have very specific perspective. Number one, the money belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are just a trustees. It's a trust under our hand. So depending on that, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of rulings will be derived from this fact as basic points in our faith. Last time, we highlighted many ayat. One of them, وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا Kathira, we talk about wisdom, and wisdom is given by the will of Allah. And we said one of the very famous definition of wisdom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah uh, give this as a gift, putting the right thing in the right place, the right time for the right person. And this hikmah or this wisdom, inshallah, will be given for the one who's close from Allah, wallahu a'lam, and related to how you deal with money. Then we highlighted uh, the concept of uh, Muhammad, uh, that nothing will be lost. And we highlighted the concept in Tubdu Sadaqat whether you show the charity or just do it secretly, which means we highlighted the concept of niyyah, the intention, and how important it is, and the tranquility and peace of mind in Islam, that our big aim, our big destination that we are aiming basically is Allah. So we don't care whether the people knew or they don't know. Actually, it's highly, highly preferable not to let the people know, unless otherwise there is something good for the sake of Allah or otherwise which means this will give what as I told you in Islam if you are a true Muslim if the society is applying Islamic teachings as if indirectly we are maintaining the dignity of the individual because anyone who is in need the whole society is built on the concept of helping him without anyone knows so no one will lose his dignity you know Unlike whatever else, whatever else we are showing now, 99% of anything has to do with fame and celebrities on earth. Is it for showing off or not? Because everything public, you know, everything, everything, actually, it's, for us it's riya, showing off, which, which considered what, what, what do you call it, the terminology? Ashirk al asghar the smaller shirk. It, 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 this type of shirk does not make you a non-believer, but it's a terminology to show you how serious it is, okay? But alhamdulillah, yes, we highly, we are encouraged, but to do it in tukhfuha tu'tuha al-fuqara. And then the last point, last time we finished, after Allah gave all of this advice, 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 laysa alayka hudahum, walakinna Allah yahdi man yasha. We tried to fix some possible misconception about guidance, if you remember. This is what we finished last time. And the thing that I always, and I conclude always, but it's very important, we say we have two types of guidance. The general type, we call it Hidayatul Irshad, which is the guidance of directions, which is available for every single human being on earth. General 
call it di guidance of direction, which means Allah guides you, me, we, they, him, all of us, directs us, tells us, like the signs on the road. Exactly. Quran is a guidance of direction. Sunnah of Prophet, guidance of direction. Stories of the people, guidance of direction. Your inner nature, your feelings, the built-in system, directs of direction. It tells you, it makes you feel bad when you do injustice. It makes you feel bad when an injustice has happened against you. So therefore, you can't stand in the day of judgment before Allah saying, Ya Allah, I did not know that this is wrong. I did not go to school. Who told you that you need to go to school to know that this is wrong? You know it because you feel it. You realize it by nature. This is guidance of what? Direction, the general. Which means this is available whether you are an atheist, whether you are a liberal, whether you are a black, white, whether you are from north, north, south. It's available and it's part of Allah's guidance that Allah will use it against us in the day of judgment for accountability. So no one will escape from it. The other type of guidance, we call it Hidayah Tawfiq, the special guidance or the guidance of success. And the simple example that I always keep using, and please use it to, to help the people if you wish or make it something similar, the road signs, the always example. I want to go to Toronto, okay? I claim, where do you want to go, Sheikh? To Toronto. Okay, 403, Toronto, left. So direct your steering to the left. It's very simple. The sign has no power to force me to go to the left. But it tells me that Toronto left. Okay? But I have the knowledge that my destination is in Toronto. I want, for example, to go to the airport, to Pearson Airport. So I have to go to the direction of Toronto. It's common sense. Where do you want to go, the Sheikh? I want to bring my mother from the airport. Okay. Go to the direction of Toronto. Okay. Type. I decided to turn right going to Niagara Falls. Whose fault is this? The guidance? No, the guidance is very clear. Turn to left Niagara Falls. Habibi, your mother is waiting in the airport. Please turn left. I turned right. So I decided to go and enjoy my time in Niagara Falls and simply, simply I ignored my mother. Whose fault is this? My decision. This is this. I'm trying to make the whole idea of guidance between Allah and the human very simple. This is exactly what we say. Because every time we say, Some people, it's not up to you to guide them, but it's Allah who gives guidance. You can't understand it separated from the context. The context, two types of guidance. So please keep it in your mind because we have tens of verses like this one. And some people especially, يُضِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَهْدِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah misguides and Allah guides. You should, Ya Shaykh, يعني, we have no choice. It's Allah. No, Habibi. <laughs> no. Allah is talking about the last stage. After I took my decision, it will be what? Facilitated for, for me to go with my wrong decision. يعني, now, in theory, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى The authorities... They built the highway. And the highway is designed to take me either right or wrong. Sorry, right or left. And the sign says, Toronto, Niagara. I claim that I want to go to the airport because my priority is my mother. If I decided to go to Niagara, the car will not go against my will. It will go with me. <laughs> The road will not be closed in my face. It will keep open. Now, this is what the law itself allows me to do the wrong, but I will be held accountable. This is the meaning of yudillu mayyasha. Allah misguides. Misguides just means Allah will accept and allow you to be going to the ring way after you have taken your decision, after it has been very clear to you what is the right decision. This is the meaning. So anytime this is mentioned, please keep it in your mind, inshallah. 
طيب today and by the way because this is a very 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 sensitive topic do you have any question about guidance and misguidance before I go because still we have many verses about uh, sadaqa and charity and dain which is the debt the idea of guidance and misguidance is it clear in your mind do you have any possible misconception I explained it many times but still if you have a question I will be more than happy to answer it this top at this point in specific hidayah wa dalal any question? Atfadal. Okay. Say it in Arabic. I will retranslate in English. We Yes. Yes. Yeah. جميل. Very good question. Look, the question. I, I'll try to make it. Uh, uh, brothers, can, can you leave this area, sisters? Uh, have come. Can, can you just move? Uh, please come, sisters. It's already okay. Zakumullah khair. Sorry for that. Now, uh, I will try to, to rephrase the question in English. Now, the brother says the following. If we considered everything before this, this is the past. This is the present. This is the future. Okay? Now, I'm living here in the present. He says, Allah knows the future, which is true. <laughs> but how can we combine with the idea, with the point of that, since Allah knows the future and he allowed us to do it, does it possible to understand that as if we are forced to do because he knows? Okay, I did this long time ago, but I repeat it again. Now, let's separate between the concept of the knowledge of Allah and our free will. Two different entities. Okay? Now, to make it simple. The knowledge of Allah is complete and perfect and covers everything. Number one. Number two. Time is not applicable on Allah. Allah does not have past, present, future. It's for you and me. <laughs> yani, time and place, they are part of the creation. Allah is completely beyond the creation. Okay? You and me, we can't grasp anything without time and place. Part of our existence as a built-in by default system, we understand that there's something past. For us, we are living in the present and we are about to face the future. In terms of the knowledge, our knowledge, it's accumulative knowledge. At a certain point, I was in the past ignorant about computer science, for example. I started learning computer science. In year one of university, I have some knowledge about computer science. Ten years later, I'm a PhD student in computer science. I have a lot of knowledge compared with year one. Still, I'm gaining knowledge, but every time I have already known something better than the past, still I'm ignorant with many other things. <laughs> and many other things around me, I don't know them. All of this concept is not applicable in Allah. Allah does not have past, present, future. How? We don't know. It's part of the creation. This is just simple uh, introduction. The point is the following. In Arabic, we call, uh, we, 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 we describe ilmullah qal ilmullah kashif ghayr mu'athir. It reveals, but it does not directly affect, you, affect your will. And my best example that I always make I need someone to, I want to borrow the mobile of someone. Can, brother uh, Yahya, can you give me yours? And uh, by the way, I will apply the example on you. Can I? But stay in the middle. Just stay set. Look now to this example. Now, how old are you, if you don't mind? 31. 31. Imagine that I have in this, this machine is a time machine. Scientific, you know, movies. This is a time machine with this chair and this table. 
And this is a very special device that I record with this audio, video, smells, feelings, intentions <laughs> in this. So this is Yahya, he's 31 now. In 2054 or 50, let's say 2074, he will be, how old he will be? 74. Okay? So I decided to go in the time with my time machine. Okay? Okay. 2074. Okay? I'm now in 2074. I am invisible. I used my device to record Yahya 50 years later. So imagine Yahya now is there. His grandfather, Yahya. So he's sitting now with his 55 grandsons and daughters. I was there in the room. I'm recording his feelings, or his actions, or his intentions in this device. So I recorded. I have data here. Data in this device now. Recorded him there. Okay? Then I finished. I returned up to my machine. I reversed. I came here now. Now, in this device, I have a data about Yahya 50 years in the future. Yahya knows nothing about me. He knows nothing about this device. He knows nothing about my machine. Nothing, nothing. I just... Pssst, I grasp this knowledge. Knowledge, data, whatever, images. I put them in. Now, now, Yahya is living normally. He knows nothing about this. What is the relation between this device and this data and Yahya's will? Any relation? No. Hiya, mujud in knowledge. Hiya, hiya, it's it. It's... It has been recorded what he will do. I have it. No relation at all. This is Wallahi al Mathal Allah, the knowledge of Allah. Okay? Knowledge has nothing to do with your what? Will. <laughs> your free will. So, but what is what's the answer to my to your question? Simply it's not our business. <laughs> it's the knowledge of Allah. <laughs> My, the knowledge of Allah will not force me and something I don't know it how and when and why. The point is, طيب, why Allah told us that he knows to give us the peace of mind that nothing will be lost or missed and he's controlling everything. <laughs> yani, if, for example, five years later, when you are, let's say, or let's, let's say nine years from now, you are 40. You are living in a country where there is volcanoes, earthquakes, disasters, wars, and you are panic. Because you know that Allah knows everything, is controlling everything, you will have the peace of mind. The will of Allah, what can I do? If I did not pass away by a volcano or an earthquake or a war, I will die on my bed. So it's the will of Allah, alhamdulillah. This is the importance of knowing that Allah knows. But it has no direct effect physically on my free will. Okay? This is half of the answer. The other half of the answer. Our... Bismillah. Wow. Tawadar. And I finished this. Zakallah khair. Thank you very much. You know, I'm a very visual person. And I like to, to, to convey the, the deep philosophical things after visualizing it will be very easy now to remember it now the other part of the answer about the hidayah now we need to know that our life is in terms of the free will or the non-free will is divided into two parts our lives part of our lives we don't have a free will really we don't have yes. and part of our lives we do have but the good news now Anything has nothing to do with your free will, there's no accountability. <laughs> Very simple. Yani, did we have any choice to choose our parents before coming to this life? Who was given 
the catalog by an angel to choose, like the avatars now in the applications. You know, when you go to the avatars, you choose your, it's just fiction, it's just uh, imagination. None of us had that. So, the fact that my mother is my mother, rahimahallah, or my father is my father, has no choice. It's qadr. Deal with it as part of your test. But, type. My gender, whether I'm male or female, is it by my choice? Allah, ya sheikh, we don't know. <laughs> no, seriously, as Muslims. No. <laughs> Allah is the one who chooses, not me. Allah is the one. Time. The fact I'm tall or short, is it my choice? The fact that I'm a black or white or yellow or uh, dark or brown or whatever colors they give us to us on <laughs> the funny things. And I used to be in the UK. In the UK, they call every non-white colored people. Colored, we are colored. <laughs> it's nice, colored people. MashaAllah. <laughs> 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 huh? Aliens. Yeah. Uh, Subhanallah. Yeah, aliens. aliens from space. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> the, the, the point now. I did not have any choice when to be born, where to be born. What is my gender? Who's my father? Who's my mother? Who's my brother? Who's my sister? No choice. But no accountability. Which means. The fact that Muhammad is my father. There is nothing in the day of judgment will happen. Come. Why Muhammad was your father? Okay, but I have no choice. You will go to the hellfire. What? Tab, I was born in Jordan. Because I was born in Jordan, I will go to hellfire? No. Tab, it's, yeah, Allah, it's not my choice. You should have been born, for example, in Palestine. Or otherwise, you, you, you will go to the hellfire. Uh, maybe political, yes. That's true. But I'm talking in terms of Qadr. Okay? <laughs> I mean, no choice, no choice, no accountability. So we exclude this part from our discussion on the question. The question is, now, very simple. Am I having the right now in front of you to hold these glasses or not? Can I put them in my face and remove them with my free will or not? If I receive the knowledge, or let, let's make it more practical, more practical. Imagine that this container contains alcohol, whiskey, beer, or whatever. I know it contains alcohol. The knowledge that I received from my Lord tells me, don't drink alcohol. Do I have the willpower to drink and not to drink? Yes or no? Type, if God forbid, now, maybe someone will, 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 will cut this. We'll go like a sheikh, can you drink whiskey on the hour? You know, you'll find some idiot people will do it. يعني. They will uh, <laughs> cut the video. But it's just an example, okay? Allah is turma. If this, God forbid, is alcohol, and I know it's alcohol, I have the willpower to drink and not to drink. Allah will not stop me. Allah will not send Jibreel and salam say, No, don't do it. You, no, no, God force me. It's my free will. Allah knows. He will allow me to do it, okay? But Allah knows I don't, it's not my business to interfere what Allah knows. I know it's haram. My duty is not to drink it, period. What if I drank it? I'm a sinful. I have a time to repent. If I did not repent, I will be punished. If I was drinking and my time is finished, I passed away, my khatima, the seal of my ending is a drunkard. Regardless what Allah knows and what Allah does not know, Allah knows everything. This is not my business and not, has nothing to do with my free will. Can I stop? Yes. Can I drink? Yes. Do you think Allah will prevent me? No. Huh. Imagine that all of you are telling me, please, please don't drink it. I want to drink. Huh. If I know it's alcohol, I now have committed the sin now. Tayyip, okay. 
Repent. I don't want. Okay, you will be punished. Very simple. Is it part of the knowledge? Yes. Is it part of my free will? Yes. Did Allah allow me? Yes. When Allah allowed me, permitted me, this is called idlal now. Idlal means what? Allah gave me the guidance, showed me that this is wrong, gave me the alternative, which is water, gave me the knowledge and the evidence is about how bad this one. My fitra realizes what happens to my mind and my body when I gather and I decided to do it. So once I decided, Allah will permit. <laughs> and I will be held accountable. This is called. Is clear? Have I answered your question? Tamam? If there's anything, please ask. Taib, jazakallah khair. Yes? Oh, type. Okay, no problem. I mean, I've been answered. I will make it in English. Yeah. No. Okay. And the dua and Okay. okay, the brother is asking about some very basic concepts such as the hadith in the Rajul Ali Amalu Bamali Ahlil Jannati Hatta Maya Kunu Baina Hua Bainaha Illa Dira Fayamalu Bamali Ahlin Nari Fayad Hulaha. The meaning that uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in the hadith, this is one of the wording of the hadith. Now, I will explain it now that, for example, a person who might be doing the deeds or the actions of the people of the Jannah, as if the qadr, the destination, the predestination of Allah will be ordained on him, he will be doing the action of the people of the hellfire and he will go to the hellfire. Now, one of the beautiful things of our deen, our great our deen, that we should not judge. You should not judge any verse or a hadith before taking the bigger context. The context in the Quran is to see the similar ayat related to the theme or to see the context of the ayah. In the hadith, to see the different narrations of the hadith because the hadith basically is narrated literally and by meaning of the Sahaba. Yeah, Prophet Muhammad lived 23 years with the Sahaba. Many topics, he was asked about them tens and hundreds of times. The one who witnessed 10 times the answer, when he's asked about what did Prophet Muhammad said about such and such, he will be saying, reviewing the core point of five incidents he witnessed. And he might be using, and some of the uh, Sahaba might be accurate more than others. That's what we, we call it, Jama' Riwayat Al-Hadith. When you go to other riwayah, narrations of the Hadith, Hadith says, الناس, The one who will be doing the action of the people of the Jannah in what seems superficially to the people. فَيَسْبِقْ عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابِ فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ Allah knows he was not genuine and he was lying and not genuine. Allah will expose his reality before he passes away. <laughs> this is the meaning. This is yasbiq alayhi, which means you will not cheat Allah. Allah will expose me. Got the point? It's, it's a confirmation for the, the importance and the power of the knowledge of Allah. That's why, like for al-ayyadu billah, al-ayyadu billah, it's what we call it, husn al-khatima wa su'al khatima. Now, sometimes, we think some people are very far from Allah. You don't know them. Out of a sudden, he's a very simple, humble person, never ever has done anything has to do with the public benefits or so on. Out of a sudden, they say, al-janaza. Janaza home, oh, our neighbor. Okay, what happened with him? He passed away while he was doing the sujood next to Kaaba. What? Wow, 
But to the best of my knowledge, he, did, he is not, not to come to the masjid. Okay. He did not pray the qiyam for us. Okay. He was not a mutasaddiq. You don't know what's between him and Allah. <laughs> Maybe he was doing a lot of khair secretly. Who said that necessarily? You and me have to be aware of what he was doing. Allah decides out of his generosity to let us know one of his great servants, even though in our Islamic terminology we call him Maghmur. Maghmur means unknown. No one knows anything about him for you and me, but Allah knows him. So Allah honors him before death by exposing his reality, which means he was a great person. Or the opposite. Sometimes exactly the opposite. Let's talk about some so-called ulama or dua. Now in the fitna that we are living now. Have we witnessed or, witnessed or not by our own eyes some ulama and dua who are supposed to be dua they were always talking about Allah and love of Allah. Once the fitla happened against Muslims, they are supporting dictators and they are supporting anything against Islam. Did you witness that or not? And they are crying on the screen since 20 years. But what's this? This is their reality. Allah exposed their reality. <laughs> Very simple. But this is part of it. Time. Let's go to other one. You asked me about الدعاء والقضاء يتصارعان في السماء. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said in the that qadr and prayer they have like a conflict or they are wrestling. It's, it's a metaphor in the heavens, which means the qadr about to come to you and by making dua something else could happen. Time. We go to the details. <laughs> this is the importance of the knowledge, the details. Now, the knowledge of Allah has levels. Allah decided to put part of his knowledge in Suhuf al-Malaika. The records that the guardians of angels, you know we have guardians. You know that, we believe. And al-Yamini, and al-Shamal, we have guardians. And they are counting everything we say and we do. And they have a record. About what, we, by the way, what we will do and they record what we do. This is part of the knowledge of Allah. In this record, angels, they are exactly like soldiers who are in a mission. They will be told, this person keep chasing and recording what he is doing. In case if he was good with his mother, give him such and such reward. In case not, prevent him from such and such. The angel himself, as a soldier, has the two options depending on your actions and he know, does not know the ghaib. Okay? This is part of the knowledge of Allah. So, for him, if you made the dua, you will be protected from X, Y, Z. If you do not, he will leave you to be harmed against your wish. So this is part of the meaning. But above the knowledge of the records of the angels, we have the record of the Lawh al-Mahfud, the preserved tablet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in the Quran more than one time. Innahu la Quranun kareem. Fi la... Fi kitab al-Maknun. Bidayitha. Innahu la yamassuhu ila al-Mutahharun. What's the beginning of the ayah? مين حافظ افتحوا لي معلش اللي 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 تتم في كتاب مكنون لا يمسه الا المطهرون ذا بيجنينج اوف ذا ايه ولا ابلكيشن اشتغل اكتبوا عندكم مكنون في كتاب مكنون قران كريم جزاك الله خير كلمه كريم راحت مني انه جزاك الله خير انه لقران كريم في كتاب مكنون لا يمسه إلا المطهرون كتاب مكنون it is a noble Quran which does exist in the كتاب مكنون the preserved tablet اللوح المحفوظ this preserved tablet it's a place where Allah has put a lot of his knowledge as a record 
but no one can touch it or come to it except a very exceptional number of angels, the mutahharin, which is the purified number of angels by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like, walillahi al ala like, like, when you go, for example, what do you think the most serious, secret, top, serious place of security data on earth? I'm assuming the Pentagon, CIA and Pentagon. Wallahu alam, sah? Most likely, the most powerful, which by default, Pentagon or the CIA are together. The most top secret data. Is it accessible for every American? Is it accessible for every even soldier in the uh, army? Not even in the CIA itself. Just very limited person. In our human sense, the most top VIP ranks in the CIA, they have the access to this. The same thing, there's come, it's the most serious data. <laughs> Just to make it simple to our minds. Now we have the knowledge of the Suhuf, the scripture of the Mala'i, the records of the angels, which is part of the preserved tablet. Both of them has part of the knowledge of Allah. Then we have the knowledge of Allah himself, which is, cannot be imagined. So such a hadith is talking about the angels, okay? Uh, for example, يتصارعان. It is known or in the preserved tablet. And for example, it is mentioned that if you did such and such, you did something else, but Allah knows. Still, we go back to question number one. Allah knows at the end, but it does not reflect you. For you, it's the question like this. Do you, your best to keep do, making dua. Once you keep making dua, you will have more ajr. You decide not to make dua, the shields are protected, so they will be taken from you. Like, subscribe for the genuine version of antivirus on your computer. If you do not pay the monthly subscription, we will stop the subscription anytime virus comes, may God be with you. It's your problem. You want to be protected, keep paying the monthly bill. Very simple. Got my point? Wallahu alam. Bismillah rahman rahim. The clock says it's three. Huh? What's the time now? Bismillah rahman rahim. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Tab, any question about this? Before I, I, I continue, inshallah, the ayah. But I, I stopped because the idea of hidayah and dalal and qadr and dua, sometimes, even though I mentioned many times, but still people, they still have questions. Any question? Any questions, sisters? Tayyip, jazakumullah khair. Let's continue, inshallah, bithillah. طبعاً all of this because the previous ayah of last week which is ليس عليك هداهم ولكن الله يهدي من يشاء طيب let's continue today إن شاء الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله says now بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم للفقراء الذين أحصروا في سبيل الله لا يستطيعون ضربا في الأرض يحسبهم الجاهل أغنياء من التعفف تعرفهم بسيماهم لا يسألون الناس إلحافا وما تنفقوا من خير من خير فإن الله به عليم Charity is for the needy who are too engaged in the cause of Allah to move about in the land for work those unfamiliar with their situation will think they are not in need for charity because they do not beg. You can recognize them by their appearance. They do not beg people persistently. Whatever you give in charity is cert certainly well known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this ayah is talking about, the, let me just pay your attention to something in, in Islamic, studies Islamic terminology we have uh, something called al-ibra bi'umum al-lafz la bi khusus al-sabab this is like this is like a principle related to what we call ilm usul al-fiqh 
the principles of Islamic jurisprudence. Al-ibra bi'umum al-lafud la bi khusus al-sabab. Which means, Allah, for the sake of educating the first group of Muslims in the time of Prophet Muhammad he decided to descend the revelation by occasions to make it simple, easy for them to grasp, to digest. Okay? Even though Allah sends an ayah or a paragraph, a group of ayat related to an incident, this does not mean that this ayah is just a ruling for this incident. Allah made it easy by revealing in the occasion of this incident. However, it contains a general rule for any similarities till the day of judgment. <laughs> this is called al-ibra bi'umum al Basically, we look to the rulings in this ayah as a general ruling regardless what was the specific occasion that was revealed for. You know what's the importance of this? This is very important because subhanallah, our great ulama, when they put this ruling, which is al-ibra ba'umum al la bi-khusus sabab, they did not know that a group of people after hundreds of years to destroy their religion, I mean about European Christians, part of how secular liberal Christians attacked their religion, they came with the idea of historicity, a tarikhaniya. And they talked about historical Jesus, historical Bible. What does this mean? This is a very, this is in the literature, al-adab. In the English literature, they talked about historicity. Historicity means, they translate it as a tarikhaniya. This is a terminology. It means, this verse, in time of Jesus Christ, it was revealed just for that specific incident, which is a historical incident. Period. Close the file. This will not trespass to any other incident or person. It's just historical information we look at it far in the history it's not related to us don't tell me you have to do it because jesus christ do it no 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 habibi it happened just 2000 years ago to teach them and it's not related to me <laughs> it's an indirect way to disconnect you from the scripture it happened by the way in the western christianity it happened part it's a, it was part of the let's say the pillars how they attack their religion from secular, liberal, atheist point of view, which is, we can call it tafriq al-nas min muhtawa, or killing, you know, destroying the spirit of the text as if it does not exist. There is no meaning for it. This is not acceptable in Islam at all. No. The text was revealed to be a judgment factor and the ruling and the principle up to the day of judgment. That's why, subhanallah, the ulama, as if they know the ghayb when they say al-ibra bi'umum al la bi khusus. So when they say, regardless of the reason, the core point of the text is the general ruling that you understand it generally by reading it. Why I'm saying all of this? Because Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لِلْفُقَرَاءِ الَّذِينَ أُحْسِرُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ لَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ ضَرْبًا فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah is talking, is saying, you have part of the categories of people who deserve charity, those poor people who were, look what say, charity is for the needy, who are too engaged in the cause of Allah to move about in the land for work. They are engaged in the cause of Allah. When you go to the Mufassireen, what does this ayah specific talk about? It will be talking about the poor Muslims from the Muhajireen, which we call them in the Seerah Ahl al Sufa. Ahl al Sufa is the very poor Muslims from the immigrants of Mecca. They did not have families, nor they have wives or children, nor they have houses. So they have a special place in the masjid. Like, just to make it easy, imagine that the, the main area of the masjid is this hall. And this consider the theater is an extension. It's an open extension. All poor Muslims in Oakville, they have the right as an open area to come and live here. They just sleep here 
and they are very poor. Now, those people and anyone who wants to give charity in the Medina, food, you know, mainly, mainly the charity is food. <laughs> but the people, the most important. It's not like now, just give money and go buy. You don't have supermarkets, you don't have, just food. So if anyone wants to give date, anyone to give milk, to give uh, wheat, to give bread, they come to those. So Allah says, Now, those people, one of their amazing characteristics, they were ready to be soldiers in the Muslim army to defend the Medina 24-7. They were living in the masjid, very poor. They are not busy in work or doing something. And once Prophet Muhammad needs any protection by any way, in seconds they go and defend. So they were restricted in this area and that job of defending the Muslims as a volunteer soldiers. Others, they were engaged in their families, they have their camels, they milk their sheep, they became doing trading, they are busy in something else. Allah is telling them, you the other, take care of those people. Now, this is the incident where the ayah came. But we as Muslims, we take a general rule from this ayah. We don't stop just by <clears throat> Subhanallah, the battery is about to run out of mine. So 1013, okay. <clears throat> what I was saying? So, ah, okay. So now we take this as a general rule. What do I mean by general rule? Anyone who's engaged in the cause of Allah, such as a teacher for our kids in the masjid. A scientist who's trying to do something for the cause of Allah to protect his ummah. <laughs> which we know part of it now, which means we have to gather the money to take care of those who are engaged of something to do it for the sake of Allah. Sake of Allah could be protecting the people. Sake of Allah could be educating the people, teaching the people, okay? Spreading knowledge among the people. Anything you can relate it to this. Ayah. Because of this, if he wants to work and to be rich, to take care of himself, he can't be dedicated to do this khair for the general people. So this ayah is one of the, like the, the uh, it calls Muslims, take care of this specific people. Because if they became engaged in the cause of Allah, they will be poor. Which means they will not be, this is not dishonoring them. They can't work to bring money. It's your duty to take care of them. That's why, by the way, Muslims invented one of the most important systems on earth, which is the endowment system, which is waqf, awqaf, subhanallah. Do you know what, why, subhanallah, uh, now some academic institutions are very poor in the West, such as Harvard, Harvard University, to the best of my knowledge, I used, I used to hear, just from here and there, that the assets and the endowments that Harvard University have are equal to $120 billion. Then I did a very deep research about one year ago, and I read a lot. Then I discovered there are just 50, just 54 billions. Harvard University, they have endowments. I'm not talking about donations now. Endowments, assets, equal to $54 billion. Which means they have the budget of my country multiplied by five. Well, so therefore, you can tell how why this kind of results? They have millions and millions and billions to fund the research, to fund the scientists. This, by the way, this is Islamic system. Why do you think Muslim scholars, they were very powerful in the Islamic history? Why do you think? Because they were not taking salaries from the rulers. The president and prime minister and the boss was not giving them the salary, controlling them. Like one of the ulama, Sheikh Dadu, he says, Man i'tada 
شربة مرقة السلطان انحرق لسانه عن قول الحرق Who can translate it? <تصفيق> Who can translate it? قال من اعتاد شربة مرقة السلطان حرق لسانه عن قول الحق The one who got used to drink the hot soup of the sultan, of the ruler, his tongue will be burned from saying the truth. It's a metaphor where when you eat from the, the authority, you will shut up your mouth because you know, in, Egypt, in Egyptian language they say sabuba. You know sabuba? What's the translation of sabuba? Conflict of interest. Conflict of interest. <laughs> See, sabuba, okay? Uh, yes, it's a feed the mouth, the eye will feel shy. <laughs> it's a metaphor, but it's very powerful. But anyway, because because some many regimes they destroyed the endowment system. Now some scholars in Azhar and other Azhar they became saying they don't say the truth because simply they will be thrown in the streets, you know, that's why, I mean, the idea. This ayah gives you an idea about the power of the society and supporting those who work for the cause of Allah, which is an open area, the cause of Allah. One of it's those who fight against enemies or protect. One of them. One. Which could be applicable. Anyone who do tahfidh al-Quran, anyone who spread the knowledge, anyone who do medicine, anyone or from this, and gives you um, uh, the importance. But let's continue. قال لا يستطيعنا قال يحسبهم الجاهل أغنياء من التعفف تعرفهم بسيماهم لا يسألون الناس الحافة. Those unfamiliar with their situation will think they are not in need for charity because they do not beg. Now Allah is telling us about the fuqara. A group of fuqara, the genuine fuqara, the, the genuine poor people who are engaged in doing a lot of things for the sake of Allah and they don't have sufficient fund to take care of themselves. Part of their characteristics that when you look at them you can tell that they are in need but they don't beg. What could be the message? Wallahu alam, in my understanding. The message that please take care, activate your scanner system, take care of those people surrounding about you. They could be your cousin, could be your relatives. And this is the beauty of Islamic system, by the way. And by the way, Islamic system, if it's applied, will guarantee for Muslim society not to fall down even if the government or the political authority falls down. Still, the society is functioning because we don't depend. We have the system. Yani, what makes the full distractions, for example, after wars, the destruction of political and economic, okay, existence? There's no economy, nothing. Islamic system, when Allah tells everyone, be careful, this is the social solidarity. It's the aqidah system now. <laughs> I mean, we don't wait for the hakim to tell us that we should be paying for poor and needy. It's a commandment by Allah against even our wills. If you want to be a believer, whether there is a hukuma or ruler or a government or not, I'm supposed to keep searching for those people in need. And highly, ulil qurba, ulil qurba, those are kings and relatives. It's a duty. And... Uh, don't let them come and beg you. Go and discover them. Because they say, al -jahil wa Don't judge him from superficially because he's okay, but he's not begging you next to the traffic light saying, please give me. No, not talk about this. Those people, many, in many cases, they are cheaters. They are liars, fake. Sometimes they are rich more, you, more than you and me. So go and serve for the people. It could be your cousin, your uncle, female. Male, sometimes they can't pay the bills, they can't, so the ayah is indicating, go and search for them. Don't judge because khalas, as long as he's not begging, he does not need. No, you know that he's in need. How can I know that? We come to the beauty of this social system in Islam. What is that? Salat al-Arham. What's Salat al-Raham? 
You are also connected. Keep asking. Salam alaikum. Go and visit Salat al Rahim. We come to the Salat al Jama'ah. Salam alaikum. Now, Islamic culture in general, in general, at the time Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when someone is not praying the Fajr with them, they keep asking about him. Why? Is he sick? Let's visit him. Is he facing a trouble? Let's go and see him. The why? He's depressed because he's in a debt. Maybe in 10 minutes they will solve the problem. All of them, they collect. Why? Solidarity. Because of the system. So when you put all these things together, you will discover. Yes, Habib Yusuf. Tadda. 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 Mm. There's no problem. Inshallah, this could happen inshallah after 500 days, inshallah. Maybe. <laughs> inshallah. But inshallah, we hope it will happen. <laughs> because it happened. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Umar radiallahu anhu. Umar al-Aziz radiallahu anhu, Harun al-Rashid radiallahu anhu. Yeah, we have a great Sulaiman al-Qanuni. <laughs> you know, some of them, I'm like, subhanAllah, let's me let's engage in politics now. Yalla, khayr, inshallah. Huh? Yeah. Wallah. Wallahi, any group of Muslims, they are in need, Awqaf should be supporting them. Not just a specific area. The Awqaf, brother, Awqaf was the basic, powerful pillar in the Islamic Ummah to support everything. Just to give you an idea, before the criminal Abdul Nasser came, huh? Al-Azhar was the richest religious institution on earth because of the endowments. Al-Azhar. Do you know Al-Azhar have assets in Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore? Okay, you know, you know, pieces of lands, farms, waqful Al-Azhar. It's after Abdul Nasser did that meme, which means they controlled everything, they seized it and they took it to control the tongues of the ulama. The richest, the richest second religious institution was and still is the Vatican. By the way, do you know that the Vatican has its own bank? Do you know that? Do you know or you don't know? There is the Vatican has its own bank, which deals with billions. Go and read Da Vinci Code. Have you read Da Vinci Code? Go and read Da Vinci Code. Yes, no, I'm, no, I'm talking about the money now. Talk about money. Billions. But Al-Azhar used to be number one. After they seized it to control the ulama, they lost the power. But definitely, definitely, Awqaf should be supporting nearly everything. Yes, that's true. Allah al uh, uh, let me just in a few minutes because the, the, the broadcasting will stop here now because. Uh, Awqaf endowments. Uh, you know what's endowments? Okay. Endowments, say for example. For example, let's imagine that I'm a businessman. And I have a lot of money. Part of my money that, let's say, I have a building with 10 apartments. Normally, if I pass away, this will be part of the inheritance for my kids and my family and so on. Out of my money, I decided to make this building of 10 apartments work, especially for Dar Foundation. This means up to the day of judgment, this building, what comes from the rents, let's say, for example, $100,000 a month will be paid from this building to the expense of Dar Foundation. And it will be excluded from my kids completely. Till Allah wills, earthquake will come, this is collapsed, 
the, the, the dar decided to sell it and to invest in another place, whatever, the money is exclusive to take care of dar foundation as a waqf, which means no one as a person will benefit. It will be. This is called waqf, okay, endowment. And the waqf could be for the masjid, and it could be for a group of people, and it could be for a family. For example, imagine that I belong to a big family, and I decided to use one of my buildings, the, which, let's say, makes $10,000 a month after my death, as waqf for the disabled people in my family. <laughs> Just for the disabled. Anyone with disability has the right till the day of judgment in what comes from this building. His special wheelchair, special electric car, special, they will be taken from this. <laughs> That's why, for example, which is a huge topic now because we can do tens of, for example, I can make a waqf, my factory. I have 10 factories, I'm a multi-billionaire. This factory, which let's say manufacture, let's say for example, electrical devices, the asset is $10 million. I decided to make this factory as a waqf endowment just for the clever people in Islamic schools in Canada to continue their studies specifically in medicine and something up to the PhD. <laughs> so the money will be reserved for any Muslim in Canada till the day of judgment, he will have a scholarship from my waqf. <laughs> That's why we have Wizarat al awqaf you know, the ministries of endowments, which means they do the management for this awqaf to take the money and spend it on the purpose that was uh, assigned by the waqf, the person who did it. Clear? Okay. Did, uh, anyone knows what's the waqf now? In English, it would be trust. In trust like they say endowment. endowment. Okay. endowment. This is what I know. Endowment. Allahu alam. Let me. Ah, I this misleading me. It's not working. <laughs> the time is not passing. I'm speaking since one hour and still is. <laughs> the battery is. Taib Allah Musa Sayyidina Muhammad. Let me just finish this ayah. Allah Musa Sayyidina Sayyidina Muhammad. قال تعرف مسيح قال لا يسأل وما تنفق من خير فإن الله به عليم whatever you give in charity is certainly well known to Allah سبحانه وتعالى now I will stop here inshallah by this we have covered at least we have fixed the concept of guidance and misguidance clearly inshallah and we highlighted the the concept of العبرة بعموم اللفظ لا بخصوص السبب and the importance of endowments or الأوقاف بإذن مولى عز وجل جزاكم الله خير أهلا وسهلا أهلا أهلا وسهلا أهلا وسهلا بالحلوين you see how beautiful his smile is ما شاء الله the most beautiful smile in the masjid والله always spreads happiness and by the way this is part of charity this is charity والله تبسمك في وجه أخيك أو يعني سكسم تشاليتي إن شورت البقرة. When you smile in the face of your Muslim brothers, you are you are you are doing an act of charity. You are donating. You are doing a charity. ما شاء الله. زاك الله خير. When I first came to Canada, yeah. Some non-Muslim asked me why you always smile. And they said I don't know. Maybe because I'm a Muslim and our religion orders us to smile in the face of others. And they said no, no. Muslims doesn't smile. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You they don't smile. A, you can be a Muslim. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but then I explained them it's a cultural stuff from some places in some countries, some regions. So how? Yeah. By the way, generally I, I, I heard from some non-Arabs and non-Muslims. They think when we speak, especially some cultures, we are fighting. Yeah. But this is, I mean, this is the vibe, it's very loud. We say, are you fighting? No, no, no I'm greeting him. <laughs> Just greeting. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, subhanAllah, can you stop the, you know, I, I will say something. Mm -hmm. Not politics. <laughs>